Welcome to Story Break, the writer's room podcast where three Hollywood pros have just one hour to turn a humble idea into a cinematic masterpiece. Will we succeed? Will we fall flat on our faces? And will filthy lucre get into our hands from these ideas eventually? We hope so. I am the world's greatest desktop picture photographer of all time, Freddie Wong. I'm Will Campos. I'm a screenwriter. I'm Matthew Arnold, PSL lover first, writer, director second. Have you guys PSL today? What Sorry, is PSL? PSL? Pumpkin spice lattes, man. Just oh start it up. <laughs> Pumpkin spice latte started today. Is that an today. actual PSL? Is that an actual? T- I'm just saying it surprised me today. I went to Starbucks. I got a pumpkin spice latte and a pumpkin spice scone, and my day is starting off great. So I'm ready for this. Let's do this. What is sorry? What is? <laughs> if this podcast sounds especially white today, is because men. <laughs> Wait. So is PSL an accepted like? Uh... Yeah, it's PSL. Okay. So has someone done like you know the YSL that luxury brand like you say Laurent like you do that except instead of YSL it's just PSL on a black shirt with gold. No. Free shirt idea. Hit me up. I get all the royalties from that. 10%. Free me up. Hit me up for that idea I just said. Free That's a shirt solid idea. idea. Hit me up to pay me for this free shirt idea. Listen, you got to, you know what you know what's you know what's right. Anyway, we what we do is not discuss the current events of the world. We do try and break stories successfully. And this week, an especially spicy one. Flow from progressive. This the, was the, recommended by somebody that we can't find right now, but we will make sure but to But I will hunt them down yeah, and I will very upset kill about them. This. Why are you upset about this one, Will? I don't know, man. I, it was like a week ago. I was like, "Flow, that sounds like fun. Let's put that on the list." And then I just I woke up with Matt and I just to just to clear for a second. We had a long Matt, week. Matt and I had a long weekend. We spent the entire day Labor Day weekend working on our uh, our our actual movie, uh, the screenplay for it. And then we hit this huge wall yesterday, and like it was just this whole arduous thing. And so I'm just stressed out and cranky. <laughs> now I fucking woke up today, and all this horrible shit's going on in Washington. And I'm like, great now. I'm just now I gotta just sit down for a fucking hour and just like adapt an insurance commercial into a movie. But and lucky a, for you folks driving home, you get to enjoy all this fun energy as we try to break this. Story. I'm putting it out there just so that I can just put it into the universe. Yep. And I'm just you know like this is the job of writing. This is you know it doesn't matter what's going on in the world. You know you st- Shakespeare's got to get paid, dude. Yeah, and, and this you still got to. And this you know, podcast is how we get paid. And this is <laughs> pretty much. Podcast has not made us any money yet, but maybe someday it will. So like I'm I'm just. I, I'm taking all that that sort of that steam I've got and I'm rechanneling it, but this might be a challenge for me. That's all I'm saying. Okay, all right. All right. But I'm well, going to bring as much positivity as I can. I don't want a repeat of Sonic. Uh, yeah. So let's let's get into and we it. Don't Sonic have is our <laughs> Sonic is our blue hedgehog. Our and we white don't whale, have a lot. And look, I'll be honest. We were we were so tired because we've been. I mean, I think we like nine days straight and like the, again this Labor Day week, not just Labor Day, the whole weekend we were in Labor office all day. Yeah, um, all day writing. Now I'm writing. gonna feel even worse if we nail it on this. Because then I'm gonna be like, I spent spend days and days yeah. working on the movie that, like, you know, oh, we like we're putting our heart and soul into, and it's gonna be like, and then I just off the dome, knocked out this flow thing, and I'm gonna be like, yeah. what's wrong with me? I'm broken. That's what it is. We almost, I almost didn't even want to write today. I'm a I mean, broken I, man. All right, all right, gentlemen, the clock starts now. Okay, flow. So, the fictional salesperson from Progressive, the auto, in, uh, what the insurance company generally, the insurance company. Yes. flow to to <clears throat> from Wikipedia. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> Flo is a fictional salesperson. A, par- a fictional salesperson. Uh, wow. <laughs> fictional, because it's a weird writing. On it's, Flo is a fictional salesperson character appearing in more than 100 commercials for Progressive Corporation beginning in 2008. Portrayed by actress and comedian Stephanie Courtney, the character has developed a fan base on social networks and has become an iconic advertising mascot. We don't need to explain who Flo from Progressive is. You guys know her. She's charming. <laughs> Her characterization says that she's a cashier and is recognizable by her extreme enthusiasm, name tag, sparkling white, no wrinkles, uniform, upbeat, personality, heavy makeup, and retro hairstyle. Here's a fun bit of trivia for you guys. (laughs) I'm just reading Wikipedia, too. According to Courtney, (laughs) it takes one entire hour to prepare her hair and another hour (laughs) to apply her makeup, which seems a totally normal amount of time (laughs) for both of those things, so I don't know why that's in there. (laughs) It takes one quarter of a typical wedding. You hear like Ron Perlman talk about Hellboy, like, you know it takes me 17 days to get into makeup? Like, that's the level that we're operating at with makeup trivia. Like, yeah, she wears a normal amount of makeup and does her hair. It's a commercial. It's gonna look good. All right, anyway. Perlman's like, I I don't even sleep. While I'm sleeping now, they do me so the I, only person the only little piece of information we have besides that the person is the character herself is just a progressive cashier is there's flo's family progressive corporation aired its hundredth ad featuring flo and introduced other members of her family including mom dad brother sister and grandfather all played by her 
Oh shit! Yo, hold on! And this, oh, time, Nutty, this cracks the Nutty movie. Nutty professor. Nutty professor. And this time she was she was reported to have spent an, another twelve hours doing makeup and hair transitions for uh, for the entire that act, is which such... again does not seem like a lot of time to do makeup and hair for six characters. <laughs> That's such a weird pervy detail on this Wikipedia page. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one thing, real quick, you guys talked about Flo as if everyone. You, every, you, you talk about <laughs> Flo as if everyone. Pervy? Wait, 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 no, no. Brandy, why is it what pervy? was pervy? Because who is sitting on Wikipedia being like, how much time are they touching? Your hair. That's a comment. It's a. It was like, oh, really? Really, Matt? Give me any actor's Wikipedia page and tell me, and just do a search for hair and makeup and tell me if they give them their I got a story their, to their crack. NASCAR. We'll the audience decided like it's pervy NASCAR or not. Flo, Flo's 1950s hairstyle and yeah, and, it's a big popular part of it. 1950s makeup look are a big part of her yeah, look 1950s makeup of look. Pretty. Uh, real quick, I just want to—I just want to correct because you did say that everyone knows who Flo is. Uh, most people don't because it's an American uh, uh, person. We have international uh, listeners. However, Australians—I want to point this out. Uh, progressive interest an Australian counterpart to Flo in 2011 named Kitty. So part of me thinks that there's maybe an international network, an internal beef. I was just as I'm still getting my feet wet. Yeah. Some other some other things that are leaving it. This is by the way a great quote. Yeah, uh, I think you're going the same one. This is the Geico thing. Yeah, that's uh, very good. Fan interest notwithstanding, Courtney's own opinion is that because people are saying that her it's she's kind of a lover or lover or hater character. Um, Fan interest notwithstanding, Courtney's own opinion is that the Geico Gecko puts out more sexual vibes than Flo does. <laughs> uh, she was also a downloadable yep. character in the video game Mod Nation Racers, complete with her own progressive cart. Dude, there was, was a, there was an intern working at Progressive who was like, guys, the new media, check it out. This PS3 and PSP game is gonna This own. is how you know Flo is the fucking biggest deal in advertising right now, is she has an entire Twitter feed that doesn't have any ads for Progressive in it. <laughs> yeah. It's just her doing goofs and like she wears progressive shit but she doesn't talk about progressive like she's just posting Dang. flow gifs and stuff like, like that's how you know you're ballers like dad. even Doss Eckie's dude's gotta like talk about he's gotta like, shill his that beard. shitty beer yeah he's gotta do his best the most oh, so that was okay so that was the first thing that left out of me was oh, like is, is dude there do a like a cinematic Avengers universe, cinematic oh, universe and it's her and the gecko and the Dos Eckie's guy and I don't know so hold on I, wait quiet do you hear yes that is 15,000 people on Madison Avenue creaming their shorts right now oh just thinking God. about that okay. idea, Will. Well, um, I don't know, though. No, I think... I think it's I, gotta be standalone. It's a character. She's Flo. I you feel know, like that's your post credit sequence is when the Dos Equis No, Geico's not out. paying for this fucking movie, guys. Like, it's Flo from Progressive. <laughs> it's Flo from Progressive. This is... And I believe what's... I don't want to say it without... I don't, I don't mean this to be insulting. Uh, I don't know if middle age is insulting, but it's a middle-aged woman who has, like, a cashier job. So it's not somebody who is... Overly ambitious or has had like, so I'm trying to think of it like a fun, again, like slice of life comedy feels like this this main character. She's clearly optimistic in this cynical world. She well, yeah, because, seems happy with her job. Weird, I like that she's. Okay, all right. I'm going to take, I'm yeah. gonna, okay. Could you, because the first thing actually, the first thing that was like someone's put a hit out on Flo and then she's got to, it's like one, it's like the, there you do like, it's like. <laughs> Like an ad, like an advertising version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and <laughs> okay. then she's got to go into ad character town and find out who's gunning for her or something. I don't know. Um, well, so by the way, what you said a cynical what was it a cynical? Well, she's she's a smiley, happy person <clears throat> who's who's content with her you know nine well, to just, five oh, well, job well, in this cynical say. tough world. Well, I was just about to say, which is that is essentially what insurance is, which is paying for things and hoping that you know it's it's weirdly optimistic and cynical at the same yeah. time, right? Like the the act of buying insurance. I feel like you need to put something about or some some way of cinema cinema you know putting that in cinema or dramatizing insurance which you know generally has not been a good track you, record as well far as so concerned. i was thinking about this and uh the first thing that leapt to mind is uh, double indemnity is one of my favorite movies mm -hmm. of all time okay and i was one like again that man that movie manages to make life insurance <laughs> like the most gripping thing you, you've ever seen <laughs> like the, the the first thing that leapt to me would be you do that like his progressive's car insurance right like that's the thing it's like you would do. Yeah, well, progressive is a bunch, but you know. she's thwarting this gang of like car thieves that are stealing cars for the insurance money, and it's like Flow versus Fast and the Furious. Oh, like she's like, the counterpoint to the Fast and the Furious, like. Ethos? Or there's like a gone in sixty seconds type thing going on. Well, there's something interesting here because here's because here's the thing that insurance that Progressive covers, which is auto, home renters, and by the way, to be clear. We were we were hoping Progressive would eventually sponsor us, but this is not a sponsored episode. We wish uh, auto home insurance like these are all things that get broken into or stolen. So it does feel like kind of an interesting thing where it's like if she is if she's like this like force of good trying to prevent. 
in a weird way obviating her own existence, right? Like, because to do with bringing another character, I do kind of like so progressive introduced Australian counterpart to Flo named Kitty from Australia, and looking at her, she could totally be like her sister or something. I'm wondering if we can like. I'm wondering if like. She goes down under to Australia in chase of these insurance fraudsters. Ooh, are we going to double this up? Are we going to crack Flow from Progressive and the sequel? And the sequel is down. Is Flow from Progressive down under? You call that a deductible? This is a Crikey, deductible. Mate. Oh my God! This woman looks exactly like Flo. It's eerie. Yeah, it's I think like, it's also the hair and the makeup. And yeah, stuff yeah, it's like the that. hair and makeup. Okay. Um, all, right, I mean, look, all right, all right, all right. All right I was trying to do something more. But look, if we, I mean, look, I, I want to play, I want to play with you guys. So if the, if we're going the weird, what were route, you thinking? Like, I'm just trying to. I, I, this is like, this is like, a, um, Catherine Heigl would star in this movie. I'm thinking like it's a, it's a, I know weird, but lower key, realistic. It is flow from progressive. Feels like it is a. Yeah, but here's what bumps me about yeah. that. Like her ads are like goofy and wacky. They aren't like and they set play no. real world. And, and, like, and, they, and they, like she yeah. like she's quirky and like she's quirky, but she's in the real world. Well, it, yeah, if the real world looked like the construct from the Matrix where they get their no. guns, like it's this weird white space like void where there's nothing but insurance products around. She's, it's clearly she's stylized. A, she's a clear. She's a positive. I mean, she does an, to the all of those things world. are true. But yes, those are true. But I do feel like it's not necessarily like I don't see her like. I don't know. I'm no, but like Walter to... Mitty, like it, it could be slightly style. Like, are we are, okay? Is she going into okay? This is all I'm getting to, and I'm, and I'm not making the decision. If you guys want to do, I just want to know what path we're going down. Are we going fucking Kellogg's land, and she's going to cartoony world insurance no, company, no, 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 or no. is or are we doing that? It's it's about a real person named Flo. I would put this in like. Square and like Hudsucker proxy. Kind yeah. Of okay. Realism. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. So That's like, what I'm saying. Yeah, magical. Like yeah, yeah. Catherine okay. Heigl movie to me is like like just you know sort of like your sort of like generic New York rom com. Yeah. Okay. Shot in Toronto bullshit. Like I do. Th- I see that. Like <laughs> that's what I mean. Hudsucker like, proxy is a good. I, I get Hudsucker proxy in yes. terms of a tone. I think we're on the same thing. Okay. Um, I like her working for an insurance company. And well, I yeah, think, she and has I, to. <laughs> she kind of has to. I. Okay. <laughs> Okay, what? I like her working for an insurance company. I like that she is this cashier uh, at some thing. Because that's apparently her job. I don't know why insurance companies have cashiers. It's Uh, like going to AT&T or something. They have people to help you. Yeah, but... With buying insurance. How do you buy insurance? Insurance used to be a door-to-door profession. Insurance salesman. Yeah. I don't really know that much about insurance. I it, like in terms of how you buy it. Like, but is it's like the well, so like nowadays, right? It's all through you know, yeah, like the, online or but whatever. But it's through yeah. generally it's through an agent, right? Like generally back in the day, like you would have an individual would sell you your you know your home insurance and your car insurance or what have you, and there would be an actual physical person, right? It used to be a door to door like thing. So an insurance sales agent feed. has like a has a uh, you know has a physical face to it. And as time has gone on, obviously it's gone to more online and forums and stuff like that and all the actuarial tables are just taken care of by computers. But it used to be, you know, like don't, a pound don't of let payment any, type of thing. Don't let anything stand in your way um, today. Unless it's one of those Cyclops sharks, then swim away, baby. Monday hashtag Monday motivation. Okay. Sorry, what was that, Matt? That's, that's, that's 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 feel like a complete non sequitur to the incredibly important insurance no, she, discussion. She's reading my Friday, my hashtag Friday feeling a little heartburn from that jumbo coconut latte with whip. She's just a she's just a nice oh, oh, you're happy about, lady. This oh, is her Twitter feed. This is her Twitter feed. Oh, okay. I thought you were just reading. It's not the rando. destination that matters. It's the journey. So as long, so as soon as you arrive, turn around. Hashtag Wednesday wisdom. All right, I'm trying to. Okay, this, this is, is her by a team. Yeah. It feels a little Frank Capra, yes. like this good person. Trying to do good. Yes. Right? And the world is, you know, insurance only exists because bad things happen. Yes. Right? Like the insurance is, you know, like floods and car yeah. wrecks and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I like the idea of, like, progress. so Progressive is a company. Like, it's been around. I'm reading on the page. It's It was co-founded in 1937 by Jack Green and Joseph M. Lewis. And it's headquartered <laughs> in Mayfield Village, Ohio. Like, Mayfield Village, Ohio yeah, is, like, the good. most Norman Rockwell <laughs> yeah. name for a place I've ever heard in my life. Okay. And so, like, I like – again, I'm just pulling at flavors right now. Yeah, but it's I like, like Pleasantville. Sort of wholesome Americana. You have this old, venerable company yeah. that she believes in, that she works for. Um, how do you like? Okay, so like again, like when I think about insurance, I think about insurance claims. Yeah, and I think about like you know, like uh, you know, a um, because uh, what do they do? They do car insurance, car right? Insurance. Yeah. Okay, so uh, RVs, commercial vehicles, stuff like that. Okay, um, it would be like the uh, I'm trying to. You would do there. There is some moral imperative to cover a disaster or something like sure, that. Sure, yeah, some and hurricane. Something, or something has happened, and she has to. She wants to help somebody, so she's got to. I don't know. 
That starts to feel a little, like, to be fair, it starts to feel a little bit like a puff piece for an insurance company, especially given the sort of various traumatic events happening around uh, around the uh, United States and around the world at the moment. However, I guess it's, it, that's why, I mean, part of me, that's why I kind of, I want to push it a little bit more towards like crime caper, a little more crazier, you know, sort of territory, because I feel like the closer you get to Capra, the more it just ends up being like a pretty bald face 90 minute ad for an insurance no, company. No, but like, sure. But like, no, it's like she needs, it's okay. Like what's the, like you're, you're stuck with this character. You have this character that has the flavor of her is she is, she is, I mean, from her Twitter feed and from her from her face and personality, she's upbeat, she's charming, she wants to help, and she sells insurance. So if you're going to be like, regardless of what it is, what, what, if it's a crime caper or a romantic comedy, you have to think, like, what is she missing? What is this character mm. missing? And I like that. I'm trying to think of wrapping my finger around, like, making it something about insurance. Like, what is... What is what does she need insurance for? <laughs> you know, like what is what is ultimately missing from her life, or what would make what her darkness happier? Darkness lurks in yeah, the heart like, of Flo. <laughs> um, and I like I like the I like trying to uh, break. Um, you know, not saying that anti villains are easy, but I think it's it's often it's you know it's like the guys cool but he's got some bad stuff to him so it's easy to be like he's got to change it's like it's harder yeah like this is a good person like this is somebody Flo was a woman of peace (laughs) yeah (laughs) she worked hard and then they took everything from her yeah um also like literally our movie is just like a good person caught up in a crime caper so I'm just like don't fucking want to okay all right all right all right all right right. what is um so we are uh, as of this moment 15 minutes in we got 45 okay that's a that's a comfy amount of time yeah yeah, yeah. uh I like Hudsucker Proxy as a tonal thing as a tonal reference now if I was to try to and actually that's not even my I'm not actually the biggest fan of that movie for yeah me neither actually I'm gonna think of it (laughs) I'm trying to think of it I'm like what is his because he's he's an idiot, and I think Tim Robbins is kind of insufferable in that movie. Uh, <laughs> let's pick actually, my least favorite Cohen's. Ooh, spicy takes. Uh, um, okay, that's how you start your progressive movie adaptation <laughs> podcast episode is by shitting on the Cohen. No, <laughs> my least favorite uh, Cohen's is still a good movie, but it's my least favorite. Uh, okay, yeah, it's still a better movie than everything else, but yeah. yeah. Um, it's like a least favorite Beethoven symphony. I don't even know what this lady's gonna do. <laughs> like I'm like, what does she do? Like, what is what? I'm, I'm like, all right, what would be an adventure this person would go on? Right? Yeah, I'm trying. Like, she's got all affairs. right. Like, uh, she's got to get across the country to file a claim in person at the progressive headquarters, or and she's got only 30 days, or then the person's not gonna be able to get to file their claim. And that. Huh? I'm done with that. And it's like a okay. Pee Wee's Big Adventure type thing. Yes. Like Pee Wee's Pee Wee's yes. Big Adventure. Okay. Big Adventure. Okay. Yeah. Good. There we go. Okay. Way better than yes. the Hudsucker proxy. Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll stand by that. Yeah. Uh, Pee Wee, he wants to get his bike back. Yes. And then he goes and he meets all these people and he changes their lives and he's blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Blah. Um, so it's Flo oh. and she's got this red bicycle. Yeah. And she lives in perfect Americana, middle America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which the whole town looks like the Flo, looks like the progressive commercials. Yeah. Why? Because her influence is so positive. Everybody's, everybody feels comfortable and safe and stable. Mm-hmm. It's this wonderful world where people come in. They don't even need insurance anymore. They don't even need insurance anymore. They just come and say hi to Flo. Oh, the whole town. Yeah. She, she can't you even need car insurance anymore. if everyone's nice to each other? She's actually feeling like the world's too perfect right now for her. What if you do like, we. through like the, the vagaries of fate, yeah. like like a claim check shows up, yeah. but it's for the wrong, like it's someone's claim check has shown up in yeah. her town. Ta- like again, like to me, I'm like, this would be a character, like you would do a whole adventure about them trying to return somebody's wallet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it would be like a so yeah, it would be like this big whopper of a claim check for somebody's motorhome has come to her and she's got to find the guy who lives in this motorhome oh, to return, get his claim more, check. More it gets returned to sender. Like more, they tried to send it out. Yeah, more yeah. stakes than just money. It's it's a mobile home or somebody's. She she's talking to this nice couple or whatever, and mm-hmm. they're going on a big road trip. They leave and they haven't finished. They didn't sign the paper. They're going without insurance. <laughs> oh, that's great! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there's this nice couple that she loves. Yes. That's traveling across they, the whole oh, country like without Mr. insurance. Thing. Yeah. Yes. And they get, they're, they're almost getting in so many accidents. Yes. And she's, <laughs> this, and she's this old guy, and she's trying to she get can't after catch them. up with them. She's trying to help so bad. And do you know what's her like biggest obstacle? Is, well, her biggest obstacle. She keeps finding people to help. She yes. gets close. She gets close, and then somebody else shows up, and she's got to help this person on this adventure, or whatever. Oh, movie's done. Yeah, twenty minutes. Wow, Just close the books. Woo. You have a, you, you have the, the blanks. You definitely have the guy with like Mr. <laughs> this Magoo. This is it, Freddy. 
our insane pace. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> My insane pace. We're gonna do a story break on Streets 112 at some point. But um, <laughs> that would be a good speedrun. Anyway, anyway, okay, okay. So oh, okay. He's, he's yes, like, he's that's like a, great. That's he's like hook. a Mr. Magoo, like like Coke bottle glasses. Like, well, me and Myrtle here has been wanting oh, to see yeah, the world. Yeah. Take Route 66 down, and well, that sounds great. Yeah. And then Flo's like never been out of her hometown. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. She's the okay. local progressive insurance agent in Mayville. Uh, where where was May, it? Uh, yeah, Mayfield was Village, Mayfield Village, Ohio. She's never left Mayfield. Which, She's what, like, what, this what, is what, my home. It's just Cleveland, basically. Okay, well, no. And also, my, in my, our version, Mayfield Village is, is um, uh, uh, Andy Griffin Land. From, okay, yeah. okay. One one very Mayberry. small one small detail Andy I want Griffin I do want to point out is that if you do Google Mayfield Village and the, look at the Google Maps uh, highlight on there, somehow the Sky Zone Trampoline Park has bigger text and font than Mayfield itself, which makes me think that's the only thing in Mayfield. We are definitely. The Sky Zone Trampoline Mart is gonna feature and, and real quick, in and this I want movie. To, and also, just very, just very quickly, how ironic that a trampoline park, perhaps the most dangerous activity a kid can undertake, in the same place as the hometown of Progress Insurance. That's all. Just my small bit of fun irony. They're the big client. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> They're the biggest client. We also do trampoline insurance. It's like, well, <laughs> <laughs> you would do that. Yeah, you do as a thing. It's that they do uh, that they do home. They do you know boats, cars, motorcycles, and trampoline companies. <laughs> <laughs> those guys get sued like a motherfucker. <laughs> They're actually second to doctors. All right, all right. I've never been right. to Cleveland. Is Cleveland nice? Cleveland has a it's couple things. Cleveland is a like pretty straight way. ahead. Uh, American Sorry, we're just city. so good at this episode that I'm just going to talk about Cleveland. Cleveland's a lot about plan a trip to Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland's a lot about the suburbs and sort of where that is. And Cleveland has five way chili, which. I'm a fan of, but a lot of people actually kind of hate. Okay, all right, okay. all right, all right. I don't want to rest on our laurels. You know, we're gonna blink, and then the episode will be gone. And all we came out with is, was the initial pitch, which is very good. Okay, which is not a complete yes. movie made. Flow of them, progressive, middle aged woman in Mayfield, Village, Ohio. I feel like, she's like a, a, yeah. She's, I feel like there's just a little bit on we at this point. Like there's just a, like things are a little bit too perfect. Like if she were to be honest with herself, like I don't think she knows. Like her yet, desk, but that's part of like what, her desk clearly has like pictures of the Grand Canyon. And yeah, because I stuff. like what you said. Like she, there's almost nobody more to help. Like she, she. I don't looked, know if there's nobody more to help. Yeah, I think yeah. she is so she feels so bound to help the people yeah. of her town that she never has time to go on an to adventure. To go on an adventure, herself. that's what she's missing. She's worked. She works she's really never, hard. She lives a life that doesn't need insurance. <laughs> Oh wow! I was holding long enough to make sure it was good. But yes, that's what she is. She lives a life that has never needed insurance, mm-hmm. and this adventure is going to put her on. It's like she gets this. Like this is why you buy insurance. She's going to go on these adventures. Okay. A little, little Walter me, Mitty. Yeah, a little bit Walter Mitty, but hopefully not shitty. <laughs> she lives a life, life of Walter, Walter Shitty. Am I right? Um, uh, yeah, she's longs for the to see the see the world. And she's to, happy, but maybe secretly not ultimately content. So she's she's in she's in this town and she got she has a you know she has a couple clients who are trying to get some RV insurance. Well, for I love their that she spends trip. her life. She's heard she's heard people come in and they talk about like why they need insurance, all the things they've done. Oh, you know what? You know what? Be taken. dope. You know what? Be dope. Yeah. All the pictures, all the pictures on her desk are things other people have taken on their road trips. And yeah, they're bringing clients, oh, yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah, little picture. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yes. Clients send her pictures. Her yeah. desk is full of other people's pictures. What do you? Why hasn't she gone out to go see the world? That's the question because that's what the whole movie is about. Yeah, I like that. To kind of get to it, is I like that she is. I like that she helps people. I, I, yeah, maybe it's not that there's not anybody to help. It's the opposite. It's like there's always people to help in her town, mm-hmm. and she's really good at her job, and she likes doing it. It's like when is she gonna go? Like on the weekend, she's not gonna just go away for two days. Like I think she feels indebted and loves like the. She's volunteering at the puppy shelter in town. On yeah, the I feel like even like on the weekend, she's working like somewhere else in Mayfield doing stuff. Um, and well, my she people just need take me time here for herself. Yeah, yeah. Okay. make her a little scared. Right, she's well, because she insurance. knows she knows the. Here's the thing: she knows the actuarial table. She knows the exact number of people who yeah, died from yeah. tornadoes. The exact risk of getting run over by a semi she's on like, that. Be careful, she's crunched like, the numbers. <laughs> yeah. she, okay, so we're gonna do that. She's risk averse. Yeah, she's risk averse. Okay, which makes sense for us. For right, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's great because then you have that she's this good person who's risk averse. Uh, she yeah. is. Um, she she. Yeah, you know, that's but it's also kind of her excuse, right? I'm yeah. needed here, and everyone's yes. like, "Flo, take oh, you you've racked up yeah. seven years." <laughs> Vacation, uh, vacation yeah. days flow like even like John Progressive is yeah. like flow like come on <laughs> yeah. and then um, John Progressive okay so then you do uh, yeah and so she's working and she's working and she's working and then yeah this couple comes in and then, yeah they forget to sign the insurance papers and she's like oh my god 
I was, we got to do something and we, we got to go get them. Yeah. And then like no one's going to do anything about it. And then you even maybe do that secretly like John Progressive like like kind of gives her the idea to take her vacation days to go do <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. But she's like, I'm submitting because they're like, Flo, let it go, right? Yeah, or that's, yeah. she thinks that she thinks that's what happened. She's like, they're like, Flo, let it go. Like they'll they'll yeah. call like you know or something like that. No one's yeah. going to do anything about it. They've got too many other clients yeah. to worry about. And um, she's like, you know what? It's like when Bond fucking quits in Omis to go do <laughs> yeah, his yeah. shit. Um, she's like, I am. And she, you would do it like it's like you would do. It's almost like it's you played with the drama of Flo, like writing a letter of resignation. Yeah. But she's like, I am hereby forthwith taking my two weeks vacation. <laughs> she tearfully turns in and like salute her, like Godspeed, progressive lady. Like the um, and then she hits the road yeah. to go find these people. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That is fun. So and that's, yes, I would and, do. They're yeah. trying to tell her, like, they'll call. They're like, no, you don't understand. Like, because the people should talk about it. It's like, oh, we're planning on going all over the country. We're turning off our phones. Nobody's going to know where we are. Just it's really like, off the she's grid. Like, well, that sounds really dangerous. And he's like, oh, it's going to be an adventure, though. Me and my husband have been waiting to do this for 30 years. And she's like, you don't understand. Like, nobody can help them. Like, <laughs> only I have, like, the barest glimpse of, like, where they might possibly start. Yeah, she their she adventure. knows, like, where they're starting. And so every single yeah. leg, she's getting a clue to, like, where the next yeah, bit yeah. is. Like, yeah, I like that they literally haven't told. Like, like where's it going to go where the wind takes us? It's like, like, well, the like, first place we're going, like, the, and but he has some like clue that they get from that, and which she only knows, right? I was like, oh, the first place I'm gonna go is you know so and so. Okay, I also like in terms of like in terms of the beginning. And you do. There's gotta you... be some place. She's Mount Rushmore. She's always wanted to see yeah, Mount yeah, Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. Um, or now let's do something else. Uh, Grand Canyon is always well, a yeah, good one. the Grand Canyon's pretty. Grand yeah. Canyon's pretty good. I like it being so lower. I know. I want it to be the like beach. that. The, no, 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 no. That the giant Pacific. ball of yarn or whatever. The world's largest thermometer. <laughs> she wanted to get something pea like soup. that. Like, and about, so you get that scene that would be at the how Grand about she Canyon. wanted to get the famous pea soup on the five? Yeah. Anderson's? <laughs> yeah. Anderson's pea soup. <laughs> because um, it's just, I, you might have I, to be far. I do like it being something really kitschy yeah. and mundane. Yeah, like, again, like the world's largest thermometer or whatever. Like mystery so. spot. And she's like, oh, the Santa mystery Cruz. spot. It's like, oh my God, it's beautiful. Can it be pea soup from the five? I just really like that place. Idea. It's a chain, though. It's all over the place. Is it a chain? Yes, Anderson's pea soup is all over the oh, place. Oh shit! Um, well, she doesn't know that. Mystery spot, Santa Cruz mystery spot. <laughs> I think you could do like that. Like her eating pea soup is so lame. No, no, no. <laughs> I would do that. She because again, like it's a chain. Yeah. So like as they're driving, like they're, she finds Anderson's pea soup for the first time, and she's like, "Oh my god, this is amazing! <laughs> Where is this been?" And they, they keep driving, like, "Oh my god, there's another one!" It's yeah. like that kind of thing. So sure, as long as she likes pea soup, okay, yeah, she likes yeah. pea soup. That's not her ultimate dream, but okay. I do love that she's always. And then yeah, I like the world opening up to her. She's like, "Wait, I thought there's only one." By the way, it's, it's a, a it's chain. A ch- there's pea soup places well, all then, around. Plus, then you can do to, be, to, to be clear, it's a chain in two places. Oh, oh yeah. Then where's the like, other? I know, but it's just yeah, it yeah. should be something. It should be a site. Not okay, a okay. food. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It should be a site. It should be a place. Like if you were it's a pilgrimage. Th- if you were going to do that, it's the world's largest thermometer. You would do she finally sees the old couple there because they came there on her recommendation or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh, and then she sees yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But then through a zany series of mishaps, yeah. the thermometer is going to fall over on their RV. Oh, my God. And gosh. then she's got to put her life on that. She's got to risk. She's got to yeah. take a risk to save the day and like or something like that. that no, I like, the, I like the final. Tying the final, those two together yeah. is a good. The climax is like literally the RV is going to, yeah, be destroyed, like, from her own doing, essentially. Yeah. Um, um, at the end, and then, yeah, somehow she saves Giant it. ball of yarn is fun, because it could roll over the RV. I'm going to find something specific. You know who has got a co-star in this, in some way, is Chris fucking Hemsworth. <laughs> I feel like it's like her car breaks down, and then this cowboy shows up to help her, and it's Chris Hemsworth. Because it's like, you're just like, <laughs> and he's just this strapping hunk or whatever, and then he's totally in love with her. I don't know. Um... Visions from Will's fan fiction just now. That Flo Thor fanfic. Um, <laughs> it should just likes, be Thor. <laughs> everybody still likes SeaWorld, right? She just wants no. to SeaWorld. No, <laughs> no, SeaWorld is totally, totally great. Everyone loves it. Um, um, it should be SeaWorld. <laughs> <laughs> when she gets out act, there. Your act four low point, because again, the character's got to be broken at some point. She just watches Blackfish. <laughs> she's like, oh like, my have God. Have you seen that... this doc? And then that's the metaphor. Is she's like the orca. Like she's been trapped in her hometown this whole time. And oh, then she's damn. like, this is getting stupid. All right, Matt, what are you doing? You're... I'm sorry, I'm looking for oddball excursions. And... Okay. What's wrong with a big thermometer? I want a real one. The world's there largest is a thermometer large... is a real thing. Wait, in California? Why does it have to be in California? Because it, it should be it's far the coast, away. baby. Yeah, Baker, Baker California. California. Boom! All right. Look at that. Just from half court, Will's drilling yeah, shots, and you're sitting it. there on Google. Freaking drained it. All right. 
It's near okay. Death Valley because it's hot in Death Valley. Oh my god, that's why she doesn't realize it's in fucking Death Valley. <laughs> the scariest place on earth that has no, death in the name. she definitely tips over the large. She definitely tips over the world's largest. And to be clear, Matt, I, okay, in your head, I know you have an idea of what that looks like. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Okay, it's too it's, late. It's very digital. It's not a liquid. Yeah, it's film. definitely this thing sucks. This is not what I was thinking. It was oh, by the way, you totally do that. Like the um, we oh, change the, it production design wise. It's okay, next to a Bob's right, Big Boy. Whatever. Right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what? Let's figure out the movie. Jesus. All right. <laughs> so, okay. So you can, 30 minutes, Will. All right. Great. Does, can we debate about what the thermometer looks look, like for 20 intro, more minutes? Look, act one, intro. Okay. Old couple is progressive. Full of progressive. She's a middle-aged, middle-aged woman in Mayfield Village, Ohio. She's bound to help the people of her town. She's, She's beloved. Risk-over. She's like the She's favorite beloved. daughter of yes. Mayfield. Everybody wants her to take a break. She doesn't want to. She wants to keep Employee helping. Employee of the month 17 times in a row or whatever. Little do yeah. we know she's actually, actually risk-averse. We'll get to that in one second because just finishing Act 1, you get introduced to this old couple. They're going off on this grand adventure. They've lived. They've been happily married for 60 years. Their life has been quiet and peaceful. Their kids are now have grandkids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They're selling everything. Everything. They got an RV. They're going where the wind takes them. It sounds like a mighty adventure. She's like, well, well you got to get this insurance, this insurance. She's making sure they're super safe. Yeah. They drive off. Oh, my God. They didn't sign insurance. They have no insurance. I'm going to go help them. Everybody's like, don't do it. Just go take a vacation. And she's like, I'm doing it. And, yes, yeah, she hands in her two weeks vacation, which she's never taken her entire career to go. Yeah. Okay. The one thing missing from Act 1. It would be nice to know why she is risk adverse. It, it, we should have some specific, even if it's, especially if it's kind of Hudsucker proxy S. Like, I, couldn't, I don't think you can just do... You have a chance for something goofy, kind of, again, not, not literally like her cat got run over, but like she was risky once. Yeah, <laughs> she right. She rolled right. the dice. Yeah. yeah. And it hurts something that, you know, she really likes. It'll give her a little, you know, whatever quirk, a little a little characterization. She wrecked her dad's car when she was a kid. Oh, because it, it should be something car related, I it guess. Was, she was a rowdy teen yeah. and wanted to go to, like, what's the tamest band you could want oh, to see? God, oh, my God. Dave Matthews Band. <laughs> and her dad wouldn't let her go to the Dave Matthews Band concert. She, so she she stole his car to drive her friends, and she dented the front bumper. I was about to say, it and be it, because she was driving... They didn't get any insurance, and he had to sell the car, and he loved that car. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's, my God, that do, neatly explains literally every yeah. aspect of her adult life in a single that's story. Very I, was, I just love also just like, there was that one night I don't want to talk about that's it. What I was <laughs> it's like, it was just, just the most intense thing to her, and then, yeah, it was. It should be something, so I love that. I would say maybe just for the characterization, it could be something more minor than literally her dad had to sell the car. I love the idea. It's like, you think it's this tragic story. It's like she stole the car, and it's like she backs up and just like barely bumps the fender, and she has to pay for it which is like two hundred dollars and she was gonna buy like an easy big her. like it's like the, having to pay for her dad's bumper lost her the thing she wanted well, then as a she, kid. she was like how am i gonna pay for this i need a summer job yeah and then she got a summer job oh that's p-r-o-g oh and she's never she's literally been working here since she was 16 yeah Okay. And she feels like she's never paid off that debt. She's never paid off that debt. Okay. So yeah. she dented her dad's car. Yeah. And like the most minor, she hit it like a shopping cart. Like the most minor thing possible. I don't think it needs to be super. I don't, you know, like, I think it could be yeah, she yeah. wrecked the car. She wrecks like, it. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Like there she, she, or she, no, it would be, because it would be even worse. It would be like, she, she hit someone else's car. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then it was also like, she didn't have insurance. She didn't have insurance. That guy didn't have insurance. Yeah. Like, what? A, it was just a nightmare, yeah. right? It was like the insurance Armageddon, essentially. Yeah. This is the insurance agent's version of your yeah. parents getting murdered in Crime Alley. Yes. Like, this is like... <laughs> it's the Batman origin story. It's yeah. the slow, the slow-mo pearls in the rain shot. Okay. Um, what did she lose specifically from that? Because I also think this is a good one. I feel like eventually... It's crust. It's got to be like crust from her dad no, like, or something. No, it's specifically tragic for her. Like, oh, I don't know. I'm just trying to like get the... like. It, it points to her bigger want, ultimately. Like, right, if she's going to see the thermometer was... Example, not necessarily this, but like if she was, it was going to be, she was going to go see something like her and her friends where she wanted to go see a concert and she never yeah. got, she never saw that band. Right? Mm-hmm. Like she never, that's like, that's what I'm trying to get to. Cause like if it was like after that, she never saw that band. Pretty sure that band was Smash Mouth, by the way. Okay. <laughs> so she, she went she to go totally see Smash goes Mouth. To a Smash Mouth concert. Progressive. And has to sneak into the Smash Mouth concert. Let's with be Chris honest, Hemsworth. Smash Mouth is definitely progress like prog- like smash mouth is the progressive <laughs> think- of rock music so like so like okay so that's very They're good prog so- rock if you will <laughs> oh, yeah he's like she wanted to go see rush whoa that's great because yes it would end with like we're rush at the t- hometown of progressive with our progressive rock 
Because <laughs> then uh, if it's like she never went to see that band after that. It she, should be Rush. It, should, it needs to be okay, Rush. It's Rush. Nee, 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 she nee. went to go see Rush. She crashed the car. Yeah. She had to pay for it. She, she didn't go that night, and she's never gone again because she was traumatized by it. Yeah, by the last it. time she tried to do something crazy, yes. you know, her whole life changed. Because I like the, if you want to talk about that, I like that when she's on the road trip, if she picks up like a hitchhiker or something, like Rush comes on, she turns it off. He's like, I'm sorry, I can't listen to that. It's you like, can't listen it, to like, Tom like Sawyer? Yeah, like it's like, like, yeah, Rush sucks too. It's like, no, it's not that. It's a night. <laughs> like, yeah, like this goofy. Uh, yeah, exactly. Eyes on it. the road. Eyes on the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, very risk <laughs> Yes. Okay. 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 It's very fun. <laughs> okay. So I love that. So, so yeah, like, Rush songs all get boring after the first 30 she's seconds anyway. you fucking meet Getty Lee at some point. <laughs> or Neil Pert. Oh, Neil Pert. Oh, she, for sure. Flo totally has a Neil Pert like, style huge drum kit in her basement that she tries, that she plays the drums on. Anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, she's going to go after them. Mm-hmm. That's act one. Yes. All right. What's act two? Well, she needs a... Uh, okay, so end of act one. She begins the adventure. And, or, or bear with me. Is it end of if we're gonna do a five act? Is it yeah. end of act one? Is the couple leaves, mm-hmm. and then end of act two is she hits the road. Do you know what I mean? Like those two scenes aren't right back to back. Yeah, it's like the. But it feels like the character. Again, it's no. But bear with yeah, me. Yeah, it's like saying. it's end of act one. Uh, You're introducing her Elizabeth gets kidnapped. End of act two. Orlando Bloom and Johnny Depp okay, shake hands yeah, yeah, and he goes You're to right. You're right. Out, right. So yes, because and Act One is essentially her. I'm not saying these are big acts. Yes. Yeah. yeah this is a pretty. I fast. would introduce the idea. Then, just to give the progression, I would introduce the idea of if we're going to do the world's largest thermometer, that would be introduced in Act One, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So she's always wanted to go there. People are telling her, why don't you take a break? Right? Act One is introducing her. People saying, take a vacation. She's like, yeah, you know, they really just redid, they just recleaned that world's largest thermometer. I've always wanted to see it. Yeah. And they're like, oh, and they're like, I can't do that. And then this old couple comes and they leave. And mm-hmm. then she, and then surprise, they haven't done it. Yeah. I mean, they didn't sign God, up. So is, there a way, is there a way that, like, a thermometer can tie into someone's love for the numbers and insurance or something like is there like like is she looking she's like my god like a whole community united looking at these numbers ah, I don't know there's, it feels like there'd be something there anyway don't, we'll keep going keep going keep going I'll, I'll just chew on it world's largest thermometer it's just something she saw that yeah, looked fun yeah it's just something dorky um, okay so <clears throat> she wants may feel okay yes so then act two yes act two is the decision to go. It's ultimately she doesn't. She's not sure. She doesn't know what to do. She feels bad. She tries calling. She remembers they said they weren't even going to use the phone. The the people are like, hey, you should be taking vacation anyways. You know, let it go. It's their problem. They'll figure it out. And she's like, no, that's not. You got to do that. Yeah, you know, progressive. Like, or she again. Like, it's like they can't. Uh, progressive. This is like a. They're, everyone's freaking out. They're yeah. like, and then they can't get. Yeah, actually, this should be like a. Yeah, nightmare. it's mission control, right? And then it's like the. Um, uh, no one, everyone's freaking out, and then uh, she shouldn't want to do it because she's risk averse. Yeah, she should be trying to get somebody else to go. Well, and then it's also first. like, but then you could also do like if there's going to be some cranky curmudgeon in town who's like, "Let it go, Flo. It's their problem," or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Uh, I'm gonna just a little, just this popped in my head. Okay, is that you do like um, in Pee Wee's Big Adventure? There are characters that are like you know, like the opposite, right? Yeah, yeah. Like it's you have the again, it's, you have Amadeus and you have Salieri, yeah, right? Yeah. You have you have um, Forrest Gump and you have yeah. Lieutenant Dan. Like so, who's her yeah. Lieutenant Dan? Is yeah. also something that's interesting to me. But it's like you could do. There is this person that has never left the town, then mm-hmm. that's almost like her shadow self. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like that there is a person who is old and cranky and miserable and never went off to go do anything, yeah. and that person is always like that would be the person she's afraid of becoming. Yeah. do you know what I mean? Like I wonder if there's something you could yeah, do her like name's that. Blood. <laughs> blow. She blows. Um, she blows blow. Cocaine. I don't. I don't know where we go with that necessarily. Like I'm trying to. It just. It just popped in my head. I like. It? I like Lily as she's walking. Like this old lady on a rocking chair who just looks played by her. Played by her. And yeah. the old lady just goes like, you're never going to see that thermometer flow. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. Like, she's just this, like, shitty person. Yeah. Um, just to kind of <laughs> do There's it. There's this one <laughs> shitty old lady, also played by Flo, and she sees herself and she's like, I can't become her. I've got to go do this adventure. Yes, that's the thing that yeah. literally makes her, like, she's going to go. Yeah. In fact, they say, look, the only person who can do it, Flo, is you. And she's like, I, I can't go on a road trip. It sounds too dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, maybe they will call or whatever. She's doing everything she can. Yeah. <laughs> so, I've not, I haven't gotten behind the wheel of a car since that night. Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! And you're like, what happened? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just hear the echoes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So she's uh, haunted by this horrible crash. And then so, okay, so what is that threshold moment? Like she's gotta get behind the yeah. wheel 
to go on this adventure. Yeah. Right? So does she buy a car? Who does she buy the car from? I'm like, is there a Jack Sparrow type, you know, to her Orlando Bloom that is like, you know. <laughs> There's something fun about her going to like a rent-a-car place because she doesn't own a car. And like, would you like the extra insurance? By the like, way, yes. she she comes home, the lady's like, you're never going to see that world's greatest thermometer or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, she's trying to blow. Actually, she wouldn't say that. She'd be like, good morning, Mrs. Blow. And she walks in and gets her paper. And she's thinking about this. She's panicking. Like, she gets, she, her voicemail is literally a thousand people from Progressive. Be like, <laughs> where are they? Like, we got to figure this out. She's like, oh, this is so difficult. And she goes to drink a cup of coffee and she's singing. And she turns and she knocks over a thermometer. Mm-hmm. And the mercury breaks and almost drops on her. And her realization is like, even here at home, I could die. <laughs> I feels like too early in the movie for that. What? You know like, what I mean? like the realization? She's if like, anything, I'm going to go. I'm well, going to take okay, this adventure. Here's, here's yeah. what I'm going to push back on, yeah, though, yeah. is that the thing that gets her out the door isn't an internal. The thing that gets her out yeah. the door is the moral imperative of these people are in danger. Yeah. And I'm the only one who can go help them. So she is going to suck it up and overcome her thing. You're I right. The like realization would be like, it would be like an act four. Like the end of act four is like she almost dies doing nothing. Yeah. And she's like, you, if you didn't want to do, right, she right, gives right. up and goes back home yeah. and then has a near death experience at home and is like, that's what I was saying. In Act Four, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. I think oh, yeah, yeah. oh no, no, you're right. No, I was saying in Act One, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's more okay. Act Four. All right. Um, again, like I'm kind of like, and again, I'm also like, could you like do a motif of like what is like the escalation of vehicles, right? Because it's like oh. I feel like the <laughs> end has got to be her on a motorcycle, yeah. the most dangerous yeah, of things yeah. to insure, right? So oh, yeah, of course she has like this so, like super safe. Yeah, so at minivan. first it's like, I'm going to take a bus, yeah. right? Like, that's uh, yeah, already yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to yeah, take yeah. a bus in Act yeah. 2, and I'm going to meet the people on the bus, yeah. right? And then it would be like, that would they get to a place, and ah, oh, shucks, she just met, met them. Now I'm going to have to get by, yeah. behind the wheel of a car, right? Yeah. And then, like, you would do, again, like, it's, yeah, I'm trying to, like, 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 and then it's, then then in Act, yeah, you do, it's like, you kind of build it up, on, like, around these vehicles, because then she's got to get on a jet ski. Yeah. You're like, a boat, and then a jet ski, and then, yeah, like, I feel like the, the climax has got to be flow with, like, a helmet and, and pads just strapping yeah. <laughs> up on a Harley and she's got to ride with a bike like a group of bikers like oh yeah a, absolutely like, uh, like you know like those veterans groups yeah that go around biking to raise money for charity or oh, whatever oh she definitely gives a whole group of a biker gang like insurance like she sells a whole biker gang it's insurance. like the scene in, t- in uh, Pee Wee where he does tequila on the bar and yeah, all, yeah. And all of, yeah so yeah you would do um uh, uh yeah okay so what's the so, so just the, to go so back the, to really quick to the end of act two what pushes her so the vehicles get progressively more dangerous yes they do yes Yes. um so is it something like again yes you want that moment where she's thinking about she's gonna go the answering machine's going is it like i mean how much does she love this thermometer does she literally have like pictures of it's not about oh it's not about the thermometer though it's about the people yeah Oh, you talking? Which moment are you talking about? The moment you're talking about act four again no 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 act two when she decides to go we were you were literally asking what gets her out the door yes What's the, what's the, is it something that the, the, they left her? Is it like, yeah, what's the moment? That's what it is. The end of, I, we have all of act one. Act two is essentially her deciding to go. What's the end? Where is she, why does she get that bus ticket? It would be like, she would think back to the moment, right? Yeah. Her sort of. Yeah. And she wishes that she had insurance mm-hmm. on that moment. That could have yeah. saved, you know, or what? I don't, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I don't know. This is a short yeah. answer. Um, is and it, I'm like, does she steal? Okay, yeah. It's, okay. Does it work if it's something like, oh, she might be fired because she didn't get the paperwork done? Or is that not in character intrinsic enough, you think? No, she should want to go. I think it's, look, here's a simple push pull. Yeah, yeah, Right? Is you do, she's like, I can't go. I have too much stuff to do here. Yeah. Like, I have all these other clients. I have all this stuff. Yeah. I'm going to have to take <gasps> a vacation. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and then that is essentially the, uh, the realization, right? Yeah. That it's like the, um, and then maybe she has like a, I, I know what you're looking for because you want that moment. That's yeah, like you the, want the, like the, the needs of the many outweigh the it's needs the, of the. Or it's, it's like the, there's it's like the and it's the you know the farms burnt down and looks like I'm going. Yeah, like what's the? Um, it would be something there's nothing like, for me here. <laughs> like uh, like did they give her something like the 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 old couple like what's the thing that she's like I have to overcome my fear of going out on the road. I'm the only person who can do this. I got all the vacation time. Every, do you know what it is? Also, oh, <laughs> so stupid. But literally nobody else can go because the whole company except for her took a big two week long vacation. <laughs> so nobody else has vacation. So yes. nobody else has vacation. Everyone else base. is on this big yeah. Everyone else yeah. Everyone everyone just got back. She That's held actually, down the shop by herself. Yeah, for two weeks because it was the whole company. No one else has vacation. The whole company. Just bizarre. The only Vacation um, days. This is weird, like dystopian, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. modern workplace commentary. Um, 
okay, something like that. And then it w- I'm trying to think, like, do you do, like, there's some sort of, like, insurance agent's oath that uh-huh. you take, like, in the like insurance court? Like, oath style. That's, like, you know, like, I must, you know, like, mm-hmm. like again, it's, like, the, you know, like, a, sort of the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few or the mm-hmm. one type thing. Do you do, she gets a call from... Like she visits the grave of John Progressive and is like, I'm so challenged. I don't know what to like. I don't know. Um, you could do the. She gets a postcard from the old couple. Oh, and it gives the first clue. And it is only. It is a clue of where they are. I love that. And it's adorable. also like it's like five minutes away. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the next town <laughs> over. Yeah. Where she's, okay, yeah. that's very good. Um, um, I just like yeah. It's just like so, like literally day mail. Um, you could do there's someone back home who's still getting these postcards and then like oh, they're charting the path yes, that's and then very just so good. she and then in her in her in her motel uh, she like lays out a travel map and she's like putting the pin in like trying oh, to track their it's the shitty next door neighbor kid who wear who who rides around on a skateboard without a helmet and she's like you gotta be safer he's like shut up he's like the white he's like her antagonist he's <laughs> this like unsafe kid and he asks her to take care of her plants you know right she's got her plants and stuff he's oh, like, so like, that's why he's in her house day if you take Take care of it. And so this kid is her like, is her like tech guy on the inside. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> the postcard <laughs> and stuff. And yes. as they're talking, like she hears a crash. Like what happened? He's like, oh nothing. And it's like, are you skateboarding in my house? Are you okay. grinding my rails? Yeah. So it's unsafe. He's just well, literally skateboarding around her entire house talking. all the time. Okay. So the skateboarding <laughs> shitty unsafe twelve year old who uh, always like freaks her out because she just have, she swears yeah, he's, he's gonna just break chaos. her head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She swears he's just gonna crack his head on on her front doorstep. Yeah. Um, Yes, is is taking care of her house, which also means he's getting the postcards and helping her tri- triangulate where they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That and it's just every name. time you cut back, he's throwing a huge party. Just rangers just, all day. Yeah. That kid's and name is Blade. Blade, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, every single party, it's like, it's what, 12-year-olds? So it's like, it's not like ragers. It's just like, are they all playing Pokemon in the background? <laughs> like, they're all there to play Switch? Like, yeah. it's just all like video game based. It's like, yeah, totally awesome. That's very good. This is a very wholesome Blade movie. Blade has to come back at a certain point. Oh, oh, 100%. Yeah, like, Blade to, needs I'm to learn some what, small yeah, lesson yeah, I'm about like what it is that. That's the last. Well, it's a mini bike, is what she has to ride at the end. Uh-huh. It's not like a. Oh. It's like she has, like, Blade's been. Oh, these, are banned in, yeah. these are banned in These are banned in uh, I don't feel like a mini bike. Like mini bikes are those super dangerous oh, little oh, bikes oh, oh, that you're kids always about want. The powered, the, yeah, the, yeah. the which are, powered one, which are banned in California because they're so dangerous. Oh, yeah. Yes, he definitely has that. So yeah. Anyway, oh, yes. Okay, and then you great. totally do that shot where you're like, and Blade's like, I can help you get to them. And then she looks in the thing, and then you just do ding, 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 oh, yeah, the ding, 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 California. like that's where all the postcards are he's like oh my god I feel like I got another postcard he's like where is it he's like it's from here <laughs> and like, <laughs> the like, the movie, like the whole movie gets to California and then like literally it's like cut back to their place because the finale should definitely be they've come back to thank her <laughs> or something and he's like right it's like literally they're parking it's like she knows today's delivery day at Progressive and she knows like she's terrified oh, there's that like, some... like the delivery truck is gonna hit them and like yeah she comes back home she gets on the mini bike from Blade mm-hmm. and scoots across it's dangerous in her hometown yeah. like right on this little mini bike to save these old couple or whatever we'll get there okay um, um 15 minutes where how are we gonna get chris hemsworth in this movie though that's my that's big true, question right. chris hemsworth is the first he's like the, he's like, it's gotta so, be like, okay i like the bus like right yeah, it's yeah. like all right they're they're 10 minutes down the road in another town in ohio yeah. if i take the bus i can just catch them Ugh, all yes. right give me the ticket right she begins the journey and just to again do the summary of act three to a degree we should get but act three is essentially she is Blade is helping her. She's triangulating places. She's going from place to place. She starts on the bus. She loses her wallet. She helps somebody else out. Like she's doing these little vignette adventures. Well, I like that. You, yeah, you would do that. She gets on the bus, yes. right, and then she she takes the bus to the next town, and then shit, she sees them driving away, yes. and she's like, "Darn it!" And then you would do. Uh, yeah, again, yeah, she, her wallet got stolen or she left it behind, so now she's yeah. stranded five minutes out of her own town. Yeah. And then she has to hitch a ride with like a trucker or an Uber driver yeah. or somebody to uh, to who's go, who's heading in that direction, yes. right? And that's your next little check of this. Oh, Chris Hemsworth is like a rodeo cowboy. Okay. Do you know what I mean? And he's trying to get to the rodeo. <laughs> okay. Because okay. then that can get you to it. I mean, then you can get Flo winds up in a series of contrivances on a bucking oh, she Bronco. Definitely she becomes up, a rodeo clown in the rodeo. rodeo. Yeah. 
out. Okay. I don't know how that's going to work for us. It's like, you know, oh, no, because then she, she winds up in this town, and then they're like, it's the local rodeo, but then the rodeo clown's sick. They're going to have to call the rodeo off, and like all but this. The whole town's so disappointed. Chris Hemsworth's talking about how he's been wanting to ride. And like they need this because it's yes. like supporting the local economy. So she's yes. like, all right, I'll do it. I'll become the rodeo clown, yes. but then you got to help me find this couple or whatever. Yes. And, then, and then she's she's in, she's she's the rodeo <laughs> clown, and she sees see them. them in yes. the audience, and they oh. see her, and they don't know it's her. And then oh, because she's getting... the rodeo and then she's got, well, she's she like riding out. a she's no, riding she... a fucking bronco to chase after them, but they speed out you of town again. Do. She jumps out of the barrel. She's like, oh my god, it's them. She jumps out of the barrel. She's running towards them, and the bull sees her running yeah. and starts chasing her. Yes, that's yeah. very fun. Okay, zany. Okay, zany rodeo. So that sequence, that's quick like one, three. Times, that's your fun yeah, game. Times three. three of those. There's like three, three or those. four of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's fun. Like, what would another one be? Um, Let's yeah, go back to those. Boat race. Biker gang. Boat race. There's a bike one and a boat one, and we'll do you go also back. do? Could you do something like the 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 couple doesn't realize it, but there's like a like a criminal on the loose hiding out in their RV, like in their in their toilet. <laughs> like she finds out because I just want to like juice up the danger a little bit. Yeah, like yeah. I don't know, like yeah, you would have like because I'm like who's like the villain of the piece? Who's the bad guy? And it's like someone who's like it's like Bernie Madoff is running away from with like his suitcases full of cash, and then he's like shit, I gotta go, and he dives into there's this a fucking- rival insurance company that realizes like why is Flo leaving. And then she realizes it's because this couple doesn't have insurance, and he's going to get them to buy her, his insurance. But their insurance is terrible if you really look at the details. Oh, my God. That's great. <laughs> so there's this horrible, bad insurance company man who just hates Flo. And it's, who's going very, after him. it's very clearly the gecko Geico. Yes. <laughs> it's just a guy who looks just like close all to- of these other insurance agents, and it's it's the Geico Gecko. It's the cavemen. It's the Aaron insurance is on a motorcycle with, like, high-tech gear tracking them down. Because what better target than is an is, is an, an elderly old, couple, couple will swindle them for all their yeah, worth. Oh exactly. my god, yeah. Right. Yes. I love the idea of like back at Progressive, like HQ, and they're helping them out. They're like, sir, sir, the facts has just come in. It's like the details of their insurance plan. And then like one guy takes it's like, my god, that's deductible. And the guy throws up in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she definitely, you would start with her and be like, I'm so glad you came here. You know, a lot of people would take advantage of you, but you actually don't need this and this. Yeah. It's like she's, yeah, she's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Progressive freaking pay us to make this movie. Okay, here we go. So, <laughs> so this is such a wholesome well, like, movie. Cause, cause, oh, that's such total, awesome your total movie. low point is that they sign with another yeah. insurance yeah, agency. Yeah, yeah. Because, and they're like, because they find out. Yeah. They find out, and then this other agent is like, wow, like, you know, like, if you guys want to continue your road trip, like, you got to get insurance. Yeah. And they're like, oh, my gosh. And then, and they're calling Flo, but Flo's yeah. not there because Flo's chasing them. So they're like, well, like, you know, we really wanted to do this deal with Flo, but, like, we need insurance. I'm yeah. sure she'd understand. We'll sign with them. And she misses the – and so now they have shitty insurance. It should be – so act, So to go to that, I think the low point, Act 4, is because she sees the world's greatest thermometer – they they go to the other insurance company, right? It should be like the she goes on this adventure oh, like and then karmic, she gets to see the of. one thing she wanted to see deep down, and it is she takes the break for a second or something. Mm-hmm. Thinking about like the thermometer drops on them, and it's like ultimately I'm trying to think like what the lesson for her because ultimately the lesson is going to be the the, the, the old couple is going to be like. Oh my God! You were there behind us the whole time. Didn't you have such an amazing adventure? Essentially, yeah, she's mm-hmm. like, yeah. It's like you. It's like don't be like us. Us. us don't wait till you're. I'm glad. It'd be, it'd be like I'm glad you're not like us. You didn't wait till you were seventy to do this. Or yeah. And it's like, oh, of course I should be doing this more often. Okay. Why would they say that? How do they get back? I like that it takes place back in their hometown too. I feel mm-hmm. like I feel like the the climax is definitely her on this mini bike being the most dangerous she's ever been at her hometown, especially with the context that we've seen of her actual backstory of this like really minor accident that she got into, even if she mm-hmm. totaled it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's I like, like that. the fear yeah. is that the, this is going to happen to the old couple. Yeah, like they are literally going to crash into the same signpost that she crashed into, right? <laughs> For some reason, it's like <laughs> icy. It's like it. winter again. It's like it's this road that, that oh there would be it would no. No, it would be that it's like this. Okay, okay. If you want to, all right. She was going around a corner, but there's this big stupid hedge in front of the stop sign, and she didn't yeah. see the stop sign, and she went around the corner and bumped into another car, yeah. right? And every day she gets out there and trims that hedge. Is oh, one of the things she does. She's trimming the hedge, and she hasn't been trimming the hedge. And they're gonna go past that hedge in their big fucking SUV, and like he's got Coke bottle glasses and can't see. And like she also found out that they they um they they dinged a uh, like they you had actually your low point crisis if you forget the other insurance company the low point crisis could also be like they lose a mirror on their truck uh, or on their RV yeah. and now but they don't they realize they don't have insurance yeah. so they can't get it replaced. Yeah. So then now they're driving and they're not gonna. Have have the rear view mirror yeah. and that hedge has grown to be this monster size that she's got to stop this accident from happening. Yeah, so 
something like or that. Or the headlight like gets busted or yeah, something. Like and a, they won't yeah, there's like a see it or whatever it is. Yeah, I love because here's here's what you don't want the lesson. The lesson isn't like, oh, you weren't back home, so you didn't trim the head, so it's your fault, right? Yeah, that's what she's going to think. Yeah. Because it would ultimately be like when it happens, she's like, "Oh my god!" And they come, <laughs> and and the couple be like, "Oh well, it looks like a fender bender." <laughs> like, and the, their their point would be like, "Like like life will move on, Flo. <laughs> like we bumped into these people. That's why we bought insurance. Like if you don't take advantage of buying insurance, what's the point of selling this in the first place? It's mm-hmm. like accidents happen, you know, sort of thing." Um, the problem is ultimately that she didn't go to Muse afterwards. You mean Rush? Rush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's not into Muse. Uh, she didn't go to Rush. Definitely a Rush sense. fan. Now I just realized. Does she? All right. Just to think through again, because yes. I think I, I get what the fun and games are again. Like yeah, the rodeo yeah. clown sequences, you're sort of like. Yes. She's trying to chase that's this the, couple. That's the archetype she gets into of wacky what we're adventures. Doing. Are we just losing the world's greatest thermometer thing? Is that just is not. I, th- I don't know. Yeah. I'm trying to, but I am trying to get to like, what does that turn into the finale, right? Is it the evil insurance company? Is it evil insurance company feels about right? I like it. It feels more like a side adventure, like yeah. them signing a oh, different with a different. I don't know how to company. get out of that. Essentially, um, immediately, uh, I love. I like that the big climax at the end mm-hmm. is that the hedge that she always trimmed. And the same spot where she had her accident yeah. is cute. It's very again, it's very silly, but it's pat and it but it it it, it comes together in a goofy way that I think that fits this sort of movie. Essentially a fairy tale. Does she get them to sign the insurance before they hit the thing? Does she not get them to sign the insurance? Like I don't think Progressive is going to want us to say that the moral of the movie is like, insurance is not that big a deal. Whatever. No, no, the point would be that it's it's again, she sells insurance, she has insurance, she should go take adventures. Like, insurance like, is there for adventures. The it's like, what's the point of insurance if you're not going to go out there, Flo? That's <laughs> kind of the point. What if you do this? Yeah. Okay. They're heading towards the curve. Yeah. And then to stop them from getting into this accident that's going to cause them to yeah. get in their insurance, she gets into an accident on uh-huh. purpose because her insurance will cover it <laughs> instead of the <laughs> Or it's like she does the brave thing to try to stop them because she's on the mini bike yeah. and she's got to bail on the mini bike to do whatever, yeah. right? And then she, what when they look at it, they're like, "No, Flo, you caused the accident. It's going to be covered by your insurance." Yeah, it's your fault. It's oh my your god! Fault. If you can make at fault for of an insurance okay, claim wait. a yeah. plot point that actually works, that's incredible. Man, I'm I like trying to think, but it's like and it's you do the thing, right? Like, bear with me. Yeah, okay, yeah. all right, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay, I think I gotta think. Okay, you do like because she is the most careful driver of all time. Yes. Yeah. she has never had an accident yes. on her record. Yes, like in this whole movie, she yeah. never gets an accident on yeah. her record, right? She like pays 50 after cents that a first, month. after that first, yeah, her she has the <laughs> lowest insurance rate of all time, right? And after that first accident she has as a kid, she's like never again. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's so safe. And then you do, yeah, she's like, I've got to, I'm gonna have to have an accident on my record. Like it's just like, oh, and she does it or whatever. I don't know. She just pit maneuvers this RV. She crashes through the brush and pulls in and... Well, yeah, because they don't have insurance. Yeah. No, because yeah, I so like she that. The, she, the, the low point is essentially, yes, there is, you know, they slip away. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't know what, I don't know exactly how you get a low point. Yeah. But yes, I like that her big move at the end is like, yeah, she has to cut, she has to get into an accident. <laughs> I guess that wouldn't cause your. I don't guess your insurance wouldn't cover unless you if you intentionally did it. But I like. But here's what I like: the idea is like she gets docked for reckless yeah. driving. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like maybe her low point is she. Oh, maybe that's maybe her low point is to recreate the previous one. Is like she actually causes an. She was so reckless because she got caught up trying to beat this a fellow insurance guy, even if it was for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's actually that she causes an accident at the world's greatest thermometer and tips it over. As the low point. That's yeah, the low point. She I gets like her that. the yeah. first time on her record. And she destroys She pulls yeah. it up. Yeah. And she's like, oh, God, I've raised $10 a month. I've never gotten a mark Yeah, she on my gets record. into a minor fender bender. And of course, Progressive pays for it. And they're like, don't you get it? This is why you have insurance. She's like, oh, I should have never gotten an accident. And she ruined, and it's all, it's she ruined a, other people's, like, the first time she couldn't go see Rush, this time she ruined other people's joy of the thermometer. Yeah. Because she got too caught up. The she rush of insurance the, was in the first place. World's yeah. largest thermometer. The rush of American roadside attractions. Definitely this. Definitely her riding on the mini bike is set to rush or whatever. Is oh, yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Red bruschetta. Like, no, his uh, mind yeah. is not for rent. <laughs> oh, red, no. Red bruschetta. Red bruschetta believe yeah. Me, yeah. Yes. And then you do her low point is like she's going to quit being an insurance agent. She's like, maybe I'll go work for a rental car company. You know what I mean? like, she's like, There's insurance she has, there, I yeah, guess. Yeah, this shitty rental car company has been wanting to poach her or something like that. She's about to, like, again, like she gives up, right? I but love, then I love the, the idea. The crisis is like, they're, Flo, they're back. 
here. Yeah. Like they're coming to say, they said they're coming to thank you yes. for this wonderful trip they've been on. And then she's like, oh my God. And then, oh my God, the bush. Oh my God, I've got to go yes. stop them. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, actually, it should be that she, they did sign. In fact, their point was like, they did sign with, um, like, let them sign with the other people. Oh, mm-hmm. I guess they didn't. Oh, I don't know what you yeah. do. No, 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 it's fine. Um, but she gives up. She's going to quit uh, being pr- – no, she shouldn't. The low point is that she, in her, in this thing, she crashes into the thermometer. It tips over. Literally, she's watching the bad guy sign yeah, them. Sign no, them. no, no, no. I think you can do – bear with me. Yeah, yeah. She stops this other bad guy. Yeah. She stops her rival. But – She gets a – Both. The they're both – they both fail, and now – they're and then gone. the other, the rival's like, I hope you're happy. They had a chance to have some insurance yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah, yes. And then she's back home sad. No, she's not home yet. The only thing she goes She's got to race home to go beat them back to her place. And then you do the magical flight back where all yeah, of the yeah. people she's met along the way help her beat the oh, yeah, RV yeah, yeah. Yeah. back okay. home. Yeah. Including, including uh, she comes in, including Blade, who has destroyed her house, yeah. essentially. Um, and they're like, oh, Blade's no. Blade's the last leg of it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, and, and it, the ending's got to be her coming home and realizing it's destroyed. She's like, I got insurance for that. And she winks at the camera. <laughs> she got renter's it. insurance. She yeah. doesn't have home insurance, though. But yeah, she comes home. She would. She's depressed. But has she given up on the quest? I feel like it's... No, you do. She's She is at her low point on the road. She's in Death Valley. It's yeah. a risky point. Like, what does it all mean, right? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. you do. She's not even going to go back home. Yeah. She's just going to be a hobo now. Or she's she's gonna, like, how hot is it? I'm dying. And she looks and she's like, oh, yeah, I forgot. I broke that thermometer. <laughs> so she can't see it. But yeah, see, but you would do. She finds out they're coming back, yeah. right? And they don't have insurance, but yeah. we know where they are. She still has the contract that they could sign. Yeah. And she's like, but, oh, my God. That bush, they're going to go around the corner to yes. my house and they're going to wreck. Yeah. I've got to get back home. And then all of the people she's helped along the way, like that's your that's your sort of ch- – it's this race yeah. back across the country. Oh, yeah, the she country. doesn't have to cause an accident. She just gets there just in time. She gets there just in time. Yes. Like, literally, she should be dying in Death Valley. She literally – she calls to resign. Yeah. She calls to resign and she's journeying to Death Valley. Yeah. And Chris Hemsworth shows up on a – On the on horse. A, on the horse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, hey, what are you doing? It's like, I met this old, nice old couple said uh, you were no, – Chris Hemsworth that is the rodeo cowboy from I guess earlier. I the last one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I was just, I, I he was the first one. You know I love, by the way? I love enjoyed him showing The up. kid gets another postcard. That's yes. how they find. she finds yes. out that he's coming. They get, he gets a final They're postcard. Coming and be like, We're coming back. We got you a miniature world's largest thermometer yeah. to say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> the, the world's the smallest world's the, largest the thermometer. The world's smallest largest thermometer. Thermo- the world's largest smallest the thermometer. thermometer. Yeah. Uh, Refrigerator magnet. I, lo- I love the idea, by the way, that this is whole like, you know, people helping him out journey back. And it's like you're cross cutting between the RV and every single time the RV's getting closer, you're just like, She's never going to make it. They're like all the way over there. And it's the whole montage of the biker gang and the boats mm-hmm. helping her. It's just getting her to the airport where she's going to take a plane back. <laughs> she, sto- yeah. she stops in front of a moving car mm-hmm. and screams, stop. And the old couple stops. And she goes, ah. and she pushes aside a brush. And there's a stop sign. Like, oh, thank God you did that. We would have just <laughs> gone right through. She's like, oh, and that's it. Like literally her final point is like she she – Risks and gets on this mini bike and steps in front like, of a moving vehicle. Yeah, they're like, you are stop. a great insurance agent. You're a great yeah. insurance agent. And they sign the contract and everything's good. And that's the fucking movie, dude. That's, that's pretty good. The movie. And then, yeah, and you do. Okay, so then you have adventure. your wrap up, and she's got now all of the pictures of other. In addition to everyone else's pictures. pictures, she has her pictures yes. too from the adventure, right? And yeah. she's already and planning do, her next vacation. And then it's like she finds out that the Rush World Tour Rush is coming back to Europe to Mount Rushmore. Oh, God. <laughs> Rush plays Rush. Rush, Rush on Rushmore. Yeah, Rush and on then Rushmore. And she's like, all right, or again, or it's like the it's hey, Europe. or you do if you want to do the thing. It's like, hey, Flo, we need someone to start up a progressive branch in Australia. Australia, <laughs> and then your sequel is her and it's Kelly like Australia. It's definitely it's like would, Australia. Isn't that where all the deadliest it's animals the most in the dangerous world? place on earth? And she's going to Australia. You would, see, to, yeah. you would see her calendar that she's worked all those days, and the end of the movie would be she sees Rush on Rushmore, and she puts the she marks the calendar for her next vacation, and she looks at all the pictures of all the great adventures that she. Guys, has let's just do this as our next movie. Yeah, it's gonna be easier to write than what we're. Where the to thing we're writing is complicated and it's uh, weird and like this it's is just, such a wholesome. This, this is the most is wholesome. Like, episode of Storybook Overnight. And by the way, just a the hair world, over one I've gone hour. From, I've gone from being like, fuck this movie, fuck progressive, and I'm like, now I'm like, the world needs this movie, <laughs> right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's a movie for Like, today. you do fucking, like, and she gets helped by immigrants and, like, yeah. a and Muslims and like she just like now, everyone now progressives out. They just called. They said we're no longer making this movie because um, no. ironically they don't hold progressive values. No, we have no idea. About we have no idea. Sorry. But get out of progressive. Um, fuck Great. yeah, yeah. 
That was good. This All gets right. an official. I would watch the shit out of this from me. Yes. Uh, this sounds delightful. All right. This, Great. The, this sounds delightful Laurel from Will Campos. There we go. <laughs> and that was, by the way, just a shade over an hour. So pretty good. I mean, nailed we, we had nailed it. We were just having a good time at the just last. We, a... we got that shade over an hour. Fuck you, Freddie. Oh, okay. That was done within an hour. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, all right. All right. Well, hey, listen, everybody. Well, I want to take a quick moment and thank everybody who's been uh, giving us iTunes reviews on uh, the Storybrick page, which is incredibly helpful. Uh, <laughs> uh, do for, we... our, for, our, for our sanity is what he means. S- uh, I think this is Sissense21000, c- c- or I think just science maybe spelled wrong, gave a five-star review, which oh. said, this is and awesome podcast crew. I usually hate podcasts, but this podcast crew and the stories the break is amazingly fun to hear and see them make their own movies. So if you feel similarly, uh, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. We, we read all of them. We love reading them and we really do appreciate it. Other things that we read are our own Twitter feeds as well as the RJ Story Break Twitter feed, which is at RJ Story Break. We've had in the past very, very cool art, which we'll retweet. And then we also put up on uh, rocketjump.com. I had a bunch of conversations uh, uh, last week. Interestingly, um, we got into a big, long thread here. Um, David Kenny Farner uh, at Davner had a big, long uh, um, jumper sort of like uh, breakdown, which is interesting because this is a guy who actually you know read the book and uh, and knew about it. So. Yeah, he's, he's he's dying for that repeat. Of that That's attempt. true. People have been asking about what happened to the jumper. I think if we were update. to ever do jumper again, it'd be we have to read the book. They're doing that YouTube Red series. They're doing jumper again. No, no, but us, but. Us will. We should do a review of the. We should do a, a side podcast where we watch the Jumper Show and talk <laughs> about how ours would little not bonus have been podcast. As good. <laughs> uh, so there you go. Uh, um, a couple of things. Just first of all, quick oh, yeah. shout outs to some of these more of these iTunes reviews. Uh, Satch Attack Twenty Five, Eric the Well Read, Hammock in a Treehouse, Crystal Moon, Pembroke Appleseed, Steph Songs, Hervin Cavper. And then I think Fnixter was the last one we talked about with the 5X Trucker. Thank you guys so much for those reviews. Um, I also just wanted to say, uh, obviously, there was a really big disaster last weekend. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, uh, Hurricane Harvey, and people are still recovering in Houston. As a former Houstonian myself, uh, I just want to you know, really encourage you guys, if you have the, if you have the, if you have the, the time, if you have the money, please consider donating uh, to some of the charities that are doing good work down there. Just to name check a couple, um, the Houston Humane Society. Society needs donations. They're at HoustonHumane.org. Um, the mayor of Houston has set up a Global Giving Foundation fund. Uh, it's the Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund. Uh, if you just search uh, Hurricane Harvey Relief Fund, it's like the first link that shows up. And then as well, uh, there is the Houston Food Bank. Uh, really needs donations and uh, could use your support as well. Um, and they're at Houston Food Bank. HoustonFoodBank.org slash donate. I didn't know you, were, you used to be from Houston. Yeah, that's where I was born, actually. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, there um, you go. Um, also, <laughs> to pivot back to silly nonsense, uh, the, the the Frasier fan art made me so fucking happy. Uh, Frasier is my favorite show of all time. I watch it every single day. Uh, so, Wesley Regan, we adored your Frasier in Space uh, yes. poster. Oh, that was so good. Giant, ni- giant transparent Niles head in the background is A++++. Plus, 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 plus. I love Frasier on the hand solo body. Uh, in Space, no one can hear your laugh track. And then as on, w- in space, only hear laugh track is a really, really good. I retweeted that. That was a really good and, uh, tagline. Fucking master of hobbits coming back at us with two. Uh, one for Gal- Galaxy's trucker proper with Percival and unnamed space pirate lady, both of whom look exactly how they should in the show. <laughs> and then a special one for Space Frasier, which has the fucking UFO space needle in it, which is yeah, so choice such as a well. Good, which already it's looks like good. a space needle, being a Seattle native. Uh, we put up that fan art on rocketjump.com so you can always check back on the old episodes and see what the what the folks on the Twitterverse have done. So and again, for whoever said flow from Progressive, I'm sorry we could not find who you are, but that was a very good idea. Get at us and we will, uh, we will shout you out in the next episode. Yes. All right, folks. Folks, well, that'll do it for us over here at Rocket Jump. Thank you so much for listening. We need to still come up with a cool sign out, by the way. Uh, Will, you got anything? It's your turn. Keep breaking. (laughs) See you next week, everyone. Bye.